Hello, welcome to the Richardson Simple Living. I'm Maria. If you're new here, my channel's about homeschooling, homesteading, home life, that kind of thing. A bit of all sorts, you know. But today we're going to cover homeschooling because I have got a GCSE history book. Now I've been on about it for a while, saying I was going to get one for Sean, and I ordered one the other day. I got it from Amazon. Can't remember how much it was now, saying I only got it the other day. But I did get a few things at the same time but it wasn't expensive but yeah so GCSE history British history topics complete revision and practice book two books in one which I'll show you in a minute really good and I mean look how thick it is it's a really good thick book so it's going to be good value for money I think this book is so big and looking in it it's going to last her probably right up until the end of year 11 I mean at the moment she is year 9 and then September year 10 year 11 so there are GCSE years but it doesn't hurt to start them now I mean when you're homeschooled you can do GCSEs anytime you're ready to do them probably don't even have to be homeschooled to do it <laughs> if you're tutored on the side you can, and you can do them anytime you know but Sean said she doesn't want to do do GCSEs whether she'll change her mind I don't know but it certainly doesn't hurt to be going through some of them to give her a feel of what they're going to be like and what the coursework's like and things like that so what I'm going to do I'm going to swing you around and we'll have a flick through the book together and you can see what you think so we'll turn it over I'm doing it one-handed so you will have to bear with me we'll go to the front first to um, the contents <laughs> see what I mean by you'll have to bear with me <laughs> so the contents on it in it even we're studying Norman England and now in case those three they did touch on that but this goes into it a little bit more um, you can see Anglo-Saxon society on the eve of the conquest the succession crisis of 1066 the rival claimants to the throne in 1066, the battles of Fulford and Stamford Bridge, the Battle of Hastings, Anglo-Saxon resistance and the Norman response, life under Norman control, Norman castles and the Doomsday Book, and the Norman Church and the death of William the I. That's under Norman England. Under next we'll do Elizabethan England, and under that it's Elizabeth I and her government, the Elizabethan religious settlement, Elizabeth I and Spain, 1558-1587, Elizabeth I and Mary, Queen of Scots, the attack of the Spanish Armada, 1588, threats posed to Elizabeth I, 1558-1601, Elizabethan society, Elizabethan culture, Elizabeth I and the wider world. Now that's a whole new section because Sean says me, I don't really know a lot about Elizabethan England and a lot about Elizabeth's reign so she's going to enjoy doing that because that wasn't in key stage three it's totally new so she's looking forward to that another one that's new that wasn't in the key stage three but so apart from they touched on the plague um, but other than that they didn't touch on any of health and medicine so this covers medieval medicine the middle ages renaissance medicine the 1400s to the 1600s industrial medicine 1700s to the 1900s and modern medicine 1900s to present and another thing they didn't touch on either was crime and punishment so she's looking forward to that as well she's had a quick flip through that already so we've got 1,100 to 1,500 crime, 1,200 to 1,500 punishment, 1,500 to 1,700 crime, 1,500 to 1,700 punishment, 1,700 to 1,900 crime, 1,700 to 1,900 punishment, 1,900 to present is crime and 1,900 to present is punishment. And then it does some case studies. Then it follows with mixed questions, answers the glossary and the index. So it's really good. There's things in there that she's not done before and that she's looking forward to doing now the layout is the same as the key stage three book i won't take you page by page because i've just read you what's in it but i'll just um give you an idea just in case you've not seen one before if you're new here and you've not seen one of the collins books the key stage three book layouts are just the same so you've got um like your topic bit which part you study in you read it all through Um, 
look at your pictures, check on your key points. And then at the end, you've got a quick test. Now, Sean, has, with the Key Stage 3 book, she had a separate notebook where she wrote down the tests, the questions, and then she found the answers and wrote the answers. So you might like doing the same, just put it in a separate notebook. And they have keywords as well. So, yeah. Now, in the other book, they did follow like two pages of each um, heading, under heading. <laughs> But this looks like uh, not every page is like that. But yeah, as you can see, just like the other one, everyone has got um, a quick test at the bottom. So you read through it all. I mean, you don't just have to read this. You can go away and look at a documentary on the um, matter. You know, each section you could go and watch a documentary on it. You can Google and look up more. So it doesn't just have to be what you're reading here. Obviously, your quick test questions will be related to what's in here but to broaden out what you're learning go away and watch a documentary or um, google more information if you want to make more of it see she never did about the battles of Fulford and Stamford Bridge before so she's quite excited about this book she's looking forward to it and now if we just flick through quick as I can I'll show you what else is the same. There we go, look. At the end of every like module, there's um, practice questions that you do on each uh, section that you've done under the module. Same. And this is the same as the Key Stage 3 book. They did practice questions under them. Which is quite nice because it's like a review then. It's nice because you've actually got the room to write your answers in there as well, rather than in your notebook. So and then it'll, once you've done the practice questions, then you'll go on to your next module. Um, so at the end of that module, then you've got review questions. Bring you back a bit because I'm a bit close, aren't I? So yeah, at the end of that module, then we'll go on to review questions. And the same, you've got room to write your answers in there so and then there's some practice ones where you sort of go over the first bit again you sort of go under one you've done and the one you've just done as the book progresses you're sort of going back but one if you know what I mean and the one you've just done which is good because it sounds it all down to you really by going over it and repeating it but yeah and that's how it goes through now I have put a page marker in here so I can just flick straight to the back. Right then. At the back, there's a workbook. And again, I won't read it all again, but the workbook is the same sort of thing again that you've already done, which you've read up on. But what this workbook is, is exam style questions. So these would be like your GCSE exam type questions but it's good because it covers the different GCSEs so you've got Edexcel, OCRB, Aqua I think that's the more common one I think that's what the schools around here do is Aqua so each page it's covering what you've learnt and it's doing the different exam board ones <laughs> so they're giving you a couple from each one so they're like say for example describe two features of the legal system in anglo-saxon england so it's best to have a notebook again go back to your notebook and write all your answers out in there but these are the sort of questions and they're examples of questions what you'd get in your exams which is really good for practicing and it's really good for Sean because she wouldn't know what to expect in things like that well a lot of children wouldn't unless they've got older brothers and sisters who've done them so yeah as you can see going down the different ones it's got some um, questions so they're quite nice Sean be able to have a go at all of them and that's how this one goes through then and at the end of them all at the end of the first part where the modules are there was answers and again at the back of this one there is answers so yeah see it's all different ones there's another 
type of board. I don't know how you say that, Eduquas or something. I've not heard of that. The only ones I've heard of is Edexcel and Aqua. And I think Aqua is what the schools do around here. And then at the back then you've got your answers. So it's a really good book. A really good book. And like I say, really thick. And there's a lot of work in there that will keep her going for a good while. In fact, I think the book would probably last uh, more or less till the end of year 11 because of all the little bits at the back, the exam style things at the back. They're going to take a while because maybe she'll do one or two each lesson, depending how um, drawn out her answer is and how much answer she wants to give. You know, so that's going to last for a good while, that one is. And I'm really pleased with the book and Sean's had a look for it and she can't wait to start it as well. So this week now, Sean's on half term because we do follow the school holidays so that she can socialise with school friends. So she's on her half term this week and now next week we'll start it. Probably on Friday next week we'll start it and we'll see how she gets on with it. But she's looking forward to doing some new things and she was saying like the Normans, how we did the Normans on the Key Stage 3 book, in the Key Stage 3 book. But this one brings it out a lot more, like she, the battles hadn't been mentioned and it brings out a lot more of it. So it's sort of the subject's getting meatier and she likes that with history. She likes to get in and, you know, know more about things. So like I say, it's quite good. She can watch documentaries on things, um, Google things. Sean's one for Googling anyway. She's always going and Googling something. She hears something or, you know, sees something and it's that... I'll have a look what that is and next thing she's googling away and she'll know the ins and outs of it all and telling me <laughs> so she is very good like that so i think she's going to enjoy that book and like i say it's not a book to be rushed you go through it slowly and work for it you know at your own pace and then um i think it's going to last uh, the rest of this year nine all of year 10 and probably through year 11 as well by which time she'll have decided whether she wants to do any exams or not. She says she doesn't want to do them, despite that, you know, people say, well, you won't get a job, but I say, just put that to the back of your mind, you know, <laughs> but do what you want to do and progress as you want to progress and we'll take everything as it comes sort of thing. So, yeah, I thought it was just good for her to do and she likes the history. It's um, quite constructive as well. So if you like, um, following constructive work then it's really good for that so yeah we're quite pleased with it but I'll have to look up how much it costs it's, it was less than £10 it wasn't more than £10 it was less than that but because I ordered a few things at the same time I can't remember now what it was but yeah it was really good I got it from Amazon and we're looking forward to doing it so yeah that's that uh, what I wanted to show you this week so I'm hoping to come back later in the week. I might do another attempt at my air fryer. It's sat there behind me. And uh, I do want to get to grips with it because I'm not sure what I think about it yet. So I'm thinking, I can't just let an expensive air fryer that somebody's bought me just sit there and never do nothing again. So really the only way to come to grips with it and get used to it is to do a few more things in it so I thought I might just try and do something else in it I'll have a look what recipes are in the book and what I can do and perhaps have a play with it and say I mean it might become my best friend <laughs> we might go on great in the end but it's just getting used to things when you have something new and you've never used it before it's getting used to it isn't it and you know thinking because it's all too easy to say right I've had a go and it wasn't the greatest I put it away and forget about it but I don't want to do that it's not right when somebody's bought it yeah and it might be really useful especially even for certain things you know I might find certain things I find really useful for but the bread maker oh I love the bread maker ever since I showed you making bread the first time I've made a lot more since I love the bread maker but what I do want to practice with that I want to try and drop the salt in it a bit because when I made some last time I don't know if it's because of what I'd eaten as well um I bought normally I make it myself but I bought a cottage pie so there was likely salt in that because there isn't everything you buy ready made didn't they and then I ate the bread and I kept saying I can taste salt I could taste salt nobody else could taste it but I kept saying I could taste salt so I'm thinking I wonder if I can drop the salt because I know I can't drop the sugar because of fermentation with the uh, yeast but 
I can't see any reason why I need the salt in there. So I thought if I just take a bit off each time, I'm going to practice. So you do, don't you? You have all these things and you practice that till you get things how you want it. But I do love the bread maker and I have got some more recipes and I will come back and do some more of them. But I must have a go again with the air fryer. Everybody raves about them and says how brilliant they are. But because I suppose I'm a bit older and old fashioned, <laughs> I like me cooker and things like that. So, yeah, I want to have a go with it a bit more. Because, like I say, there might be things that are excellent in it and make life a bit easier, you know, and save a bit of money on the gas. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but then you're using electric, so. But, yeah, I do want to have a go. So I might come back later in the week and we'll have a mess with it again and see what I can do. I'll try and do it in daytime this time so it's light and you can see what I'm doing. And... Uh, see what happens i'm not sure what i'm going to try yet. i've got a couple of ideas but i'll have a look before i tell you what they are i'll tell you when i come back so it'll either be wednesday or thursday when i come back it'll be one of those days so if you look out for me from wednesday you'll, it'll either be wednesday or thursday so until then take care of yourselves and i'll see you later in the week bye